Hey, I want to show you the new features that are coming to StageTime.io with version 1.20. Now we have two big features, one small one, and then I'm gonna show you a bit of a preview in the end as well. So the first big feature is the CSV import and export. And I created a um, example rundown in Google Sheets here. As you can see, it has a bit of an uncommon header with some event name and stuff. Uh, and then it has a kind of red header row in the fourth uh, no, row and not in the first one. Uh, it has uh, some line items showing the segment name, showing the duration, the start time, and uh, who is responsible. And here in Google Slides, I have the option to download a CSV, very similar to uh, Microsoft Excel as well. I can export a CSV. And in Stage Timer, I can import this file. So I'll go to my the dashboard of my test user. Uh, I do need a, a pro subscription to work with imports and exports. I will create my first room. So a naked room here. And if I go to settings and import, it allows me to select this um, example CSV file that I just created. If I open this, it will scan the CSV and try to understand like what is what, right? And you can see it, it already got uh, the information quite well. Uh, if it doesn't, you still can check first uh, the header row, right? It will show you the um, entire document and you can kind of select the header row that is relevant to this information that we want to import. And then you can even um, designate which columns are relevant here. We have the start a column, the a duration, right? We have the um, kind of called the title, the segment, and you can change it if you think it's it, it picked the wrong uh, column here. Uh, but it looks very good, and you can also um, remove some line items if you don't want to import them because they're not really important to your timing. Um, and then we go ahead and click import. Now it replaces all the timers that are here with the ones from the CSV, and you can see that. They're all present. The first one is highlighted. It highlight. It shows the title up here. It shows the uh, person that is responsible, the time. I can go ahead and start it, uh, move to the next, connect them with links if I want them to start automatically, and so on and so forth. Now, um, the same works in reverse. It also allows you to export this list again. So I go to settings and click export. Um, and save this file um, in my downloads folder. And here you can see that, uh, well, the list is a bit more simple than the one that we had before. This is a CSV and doesn't support any styling, but we do have all the information here and you could re-import this into your Google Sheets. You can also create your rundown here then uh, export it and import it uh, into a program for your event manager to or for other people, other stakeholders to enrich information here and then re-import it. Um, with this rundown, we can also showcase the next big feature, which is the agenda view. So um, I move this away from the um, immediate interface into this uh, share button. If you click it, it will open a pop-up. Uh, there's the familiar viewer, a uh, full screen timer. There's the uh, controller link, which we are at right now. And there's the agenda link. I will copy and open in a new tab. Here you see a very nice overview over the event. I try to keep it very clean and simple, so it's very easy to understand what's going on. It has all the items of your event rundown. It shows the start time, it shows the duration and the title, together with the person that is responsible if one is set in the interface. It gives you a time of days display up here, it gives you a nice, um, we stop moving our mouse in the bottom. Uh, you can see like a, a event total rundown, right? It tells you that there's four hours and 55 minutes in this event. And it kind of shows you how long each section is and with this blue dot where we are in the entire affair. And it shows you like where we are in the current line item. If I go back to my controller, and highlight a like start a different timer that is further down the line. Let's use this one. Um, then you can see that the agenda automatically jumps down and always displays the um, current active, the current running um, part of the event uh, prominently on the screen um, and scrolls automatically 
um, to this position to show it. Now currently it's unnamed, uh, this is a feature I still have to work out. Currently you can only rename it in the dashboard. Um, but yeah, kind of a work in progress. Here it is. And one other thing you can do on this screen, um, you can open the sidebar. The sidebar shows you the familiar timer and it uh, does allow the person that has control over this agenda to write a message to the, to the speaker. Hello. And, and show it. So if you want people to show messages, um, to be able to interact with the speaker without having uh, to navigate through the um, complicated control controller, or you maybe don't want to give this person all this access, uh, this is a good way to just allow them to share messages. The small feature is that in the customized pop-up, we now have a few more fonts selectable. So there's a few, a few nice ones that you can use like uh, Balsamic, uh, which looks a bit more handwritten style or a more classic Open Sans or uh, the popular Poppins um, that shows you a very clean, a clean typeface. Now, because stage time is still very much in development, I want to give you a bit of a preview what we are planning in terms of interface and changes. So you give us a lot of very helpful feedback with your emails and all of that is heard and all of that is um, considered in our future development plans. So this is the interface, how it hopefully looks like in one to two months when we were able to implement it. So the design should look quite familiar to you. All the functions are still there. Some of the buttons have moved around and will take a bit of getting used to. Um, some elements are new, like this overall controller here. But the main difference is the agenda part and the message part. I have really attempted to make them much, much more simple and easy to see what's going on. Removing things that are not really necessary, but keeping uh, things front and center that you really want to know. If you compare it to the current layout, there's a lot of outlines, a lot of like visual noise, which I try to remove in this new design. As you can see, it's very clean, shows you a, a numbering system. It shows you uh, start time, duration, title, and it will allow you to do all the same things with uh, setting buttons and pop-ups, but it, it wants to give you a much better overview while your timer is running, while your event is going on, and helps you to, to navigate through an event. Uh, one very, very important difference also is that it allows you, as we can see down here, uh, to decide a what a timer shows on a item per item basis. So you can select a countdown, a count up, a, a countdown in words, which will say like, you know, four, four hours left, um, and, and some healthy mixtures of them. So I'm really attempting to make this tool more useful to you and feel free to give me feedback on anything that you see. Well, that's it for this update. See you soon.